In the quiet town of Eddington, four inexplicable events have haunted the residents for years, each tale more disturbing than the last. The first story unfolds at the old Eddington Inn, where guests frequently report seeing the apparition of a woman in a red dress. She appears at the stroke of midnight, wandering the halls and vanishing before room 313. Legend has it she was a guest who mysteriously disappeared in the 1920s. Her belongings found undisturbed, her fate unknown. Despite numerous investigations, no one has been able to explain the regular sightings or the cold spots felt in the corridor outside room 313. The second tale comes from the depths of Blackwood Forest, which borders the town. Hikers speak of a phantom dog with glowing red eyes that stalks the forest's paths after sunset. This spectral hound is said to be the guardian of a hidden grave, the resting place of a notorious outlaw from the 18th century. Those who claim to have seen the dog say it vanishes into thin air when approached, and strangely, no footprints are ever found. In the heart of Eddington lies the third unexplained phenomenon, the clock tower, which has been standing since the 1600s. Its bell tolls 13 times at random, always heralding misfortune or tragedy within the town. The clock's mechanism has been replaced and examined by experts, yet the eerie tolling persists without explanation sending shivers down the spines of all who hear it. The fourth story is perhaps the most unsettling. On the outskirts of town, there is an abandoned house where people report seeing faces in the windows and hearing children's laughter, despite the building having been empty for decades. Urban explorers and paranormal investigators have captured unexplained voices and movements on video, with some footage showing figures that appear and disappear within seconds. The house, condemned and avoided by locals, stands as a silent sentinel, its dark history whispered in tales of a family that vanished one winter, leaving behind a home shrouded in mystery and fear. As the night deepens, and a fog rolls in from the forest. These tales converge, weaving a tapestry of the paranormal that blankets the town of Eddington. The boundaries between the known and the unknown blur, setting the stage for a night where these four unexplained stories might finally intersect, revealing secrets long buried in the shadows of the town's past. As the fog thickened, Enveloping Eddington in a ghostly embrace, strange occurrences began to intensify. Residents reported flickering lights, inexplicable sounds, and a sense of unease that crept through the town like an unseen tide. At the Eddington Inn, the woman in the red dress was seen more frequently, her spectral form now lingering in the lobby her eyes filled with a sorrowful longing. Guests reported hearing, whispered pleas for help in the dead of night. Originating from the vicinity of room 313, though no source could be found, the room itself remained cold, its temperature inexplicably lower than the rest of the building and objects within seemed to move of their own accord, hinting at a story yet to be fully unveiled. In Blackwood Forest, the phantom dog began to stray from its usual path, leading some brave or foolhardy souls towards a forgotten part of the woods. There, the trees grew unnaturally close, their branches intertwined, forming a canopy so dense that daylight struggled to penetrate. At the heart of 
this thicket lay an ancient, unmarked grave, the stone worn and covered in moss, the name long erased by time. Those who followed the dog claimed it vanished upon reaching the grave, leaving them alone in the oppressive silence of the forest, their unease growing as the shadows seemed to whisper of old secrets and sins. Meanwhile, the clock tower's aberrant tolling grew more frequent, its thirteenth chime sounding with a chilling clarity that echoed through the streets of Eddington. The townspeople began to notice patterns in the tolling, with each occurrence preceding unusual happenings. Mirrors cracking without cause, technology malfunctioning, and a pervasive sense of being watched. The tower, once a beloved landmark, had become a harbinger of unease, its face watched with wary eyes by all who passed. The abandoned house on the outskirts of town became the scene of an inexplicable gathering. Figures, shadowy and indistinct, were seen moving within the dilapidated structure their forms caught in the flicker of torchlight. The sound of children's laughter grew louder, mingling with the creaks and groans of the old house. Those who dared approach the property spoke of a chilling breeze that swept out from the broken windows, carrying with it the scent of decay and whispers of a tragic past. As these four stories spiraled into a single thread of terror, the fabric of reality in Eddington seemed to fray. The town's history, steeped in mystery and tragedy, appeared to be unraveling, revealing a tapestry of paranormal events interconnected by a web of fate and dark history. The residents of Eddington, once skeptical, now found themselves caught in a waking nightmare where the past and present collided and the boundaries between the living and the dead became perilously thin. The stage was set for a night of revelation and horror as the tales of the woman in the red dress, the phantom dog, the tolling clock tower, and the abandoned house converged threatening to expose the true nature of the darkness that lay at the heart of Eddington, a darkness that had been stirring, waiting for the right moment to emerge from the shadows. As the night wore on, the eerie fog that enveloped Eddington seemed to pulse with a life of its own, thickening around the sights of the town's haunted lore. The air was electric, charged with a tension that whispered of impending revelations. At the Eddington Inn, the ghostly woman in the red dress began to interact more physically with the environment. Doors slammed shut, lights flickered wildly, and guests reported feeling a gentle touch or a breath on their neck when no one was there. Room 313 locked and unused for years, showed signs of occupancy. The window curtains fluttered though the window was closed, and faint, sorrowful music played, though no source could be found. In the depths of Blackwood Forest, the path led by the phantom dog now revealed more than just the hidden grave. Those who followed found themselves at the edge of a decrepit mansion, overgrown with vines and lost to time. This manor, unknown even to the oldest records of Eddington, held an aura of tragic grandeur. Its walls whispered of a bygone era, and the portraits within, covered in dust, depicted residents with eyes that seemed to follow one's every move. Back in town, the clock tower's thirteenth chime resonated with a different frequency, 
causing a vibration that shook the very foundation of Eddington. The town's people, drawn as if by a magnetic pull, found themselves congregating in the square, their eyes locked on the tower's face. As the clock struck midnight, the air shimmered, revealing a temporal rift through which visions of the town's past, including scenes of prosperity and decay, played out like a silent film. The abandoned house on the outskirts began to deteriorate rapidly, its walls groaning and crumbling, as if succumbing to a pressure from within. The figures seen within now appeared outside, their forms more defined in the moonlight. They were children, dressed in outdated clothing, playing games from another time. Their laughter, once confined to the house, echoed through the town, reaching a crescendo that was both joyful and terrifying. These manifestations grew in intensity, the lines between the past and the present blurring as spectral figures and historical scenes began to infiltrate the modern streets of Eddington. The town's dark history was unfolding in real time, revealing a tapestry of events that were not just echoes of the past, but active elements of the present. Amidst this chaos, a group of residents, descendants of Eddington's founding families, gathered, drawn together by an unspoken understanding. They shared ancestral memories and records, piecing together the fragmented history of their town. They realized that the key to quelling the unrest lay in resolving the unfinished business of the spectral woman, the phantom dog, the clock tower, and the abandoned house. Each element, a chapter of the same story, a cursed legacy that needed to be addressed to restore peace. As they prepared to confront these manifestations, the town itself seemed to brace for a final reckoning. The fog thickened, the air charged with anticipation as if Eddington itself was waiting for the release of a burden it had carried for too long. The residents, armed with knowledge and a desperate hope, stood at the edge of uncovering a truth buried by time. Their actions poised to either mend the fractures of their town's history or plunge them deeper into the abyss of the unexplained. The night's events set the stage for a confrontation with the unknown, a journey to the heart of the paranormal disturbances plaguing Eddington, with each step taken unraveling the mysteries of a town haunted by its past, threading the needle between the worlds of the living and the dead. As the town of Eddington teetered on the brink of supernatural upheaval, group of descendants moved with purpose through the fog-shrouded streets, their ancestors' knowledge guiding them. They divided into four, each heading towards one of the haunted landmarks, their resolve firm despite the swirling chaos around them. At the Eddington Inn, the descendant tasked with confronting the woman in the red dress entered room 313 now unlocked and inviting. Inside, the atmosphere was thick with the perfume of a bygone era, and the woman appeared, her expression one of longing and despair. She spoke of a lost love and a betrayal that bound her spirit to the inn. Her tale, a piece of the town's hidden history, hinted at a locket she had left behind token of her love, now lost within the inn's walls. In Blackwood Forest, another descendant traced the path of the phantom dog to the newly discovered mansion. Inside, amidst the decay, they found a study filled with journals and artifacts, detailing the history of a family 
cursed by their pact, with the outlaw buried under the tree. The dog, a guardian of the family's secret, needed to be released from its duty by uncovering the outlaw's grave and reconciling the family's past. At the clock tower, the third descendant climbed the ancient steps to the mechanism room, where the gears of time seemed to operate independently of physics. The tower's chimes, they discovered, were controlled by a cursed object hidden within its walls, an object that resonated with the tragedies of Eddington's past. Removing the curse would require resetting the clock to its original, untainted state, allowing it to toll in harmony with the natural flow of time. The fourth descendant approached the crumbling, abandoned house where the spectral children played in the yard. Entering the house revealed a scene frozen in time with signs of a sudden, tragic departure. Investigating the family's history, the descendant uncovered a diary detailing the events leading to their disappearance. A tale of fear, supernatural occurrences, and a hasty decision to flee, leaving behind a home that became a nexus of unfulfilled lives and unending sorrow. As each descendant confronted these hauntings, they realized the phenomena were not isolated, but strands of a web that tied the town's history together. The spectral woman's locket, the phantom dog's loyalty, the clock tower's cursed chime, and the abandoned house's tragic past were all interconnected. Facets of a larger curse that had ensnared Eddington. Unraveling these mysteries, the descendants gathered the necessary items. The locket, unearthed from behind a loose brick in the inn. A faded photograph of the outlaw with his family, found in the mansion. The cursed object from the clock tower, pulsing with dark energy. And the diary from the abandoned house, its pages filled with secrets. Together, at the town square, beneath the shadow of the clock tower, and with the fog as their witness, they prepared a ritual that combined these elements, aiming to sever the ties that bound these spirits to the physical realm and lift the curse from Eddington. The town, silent and watchful, seemed to hold its breath as the ritual began, the descendants' voices merging into a chant that rose above the mist, a call for peace and release. The narrative, steeped in the paranormal and the history of Eddington, continued to weave its complex tapestry, each thread drawing closer to a resolution that promised to either free the town from its haunted past or bind it forever to the shadows that lurked in the corners of reality. As the ritual progressed in the heart of the town square, the items of the past, the locket, the photograph, the cursed object, and the diary began to resonate, emitting a light that pierced the encompassing fog. The air vibrated with the power of centuries-old grievances seeking resolution. In room 313 of the Eddington Inn, the spectral woman in the red dress watched silently, her figure flickering between eras, as if caught in a temporal loop. The locket, once a symbol of her undying love, became the key to unraveling her earthly attachments, allowing her to recount her story of love, betrayal, and loss to the descendant who could finally listen and understand. Deep within Blackwood Forest, the phantom dog led its companion to the outlaw's grave, where the photograph served as a bridge between the past and the present. The grave 
long neglected and hidden was revealed in the moonlight, allowing the descendant to perform a ritual of reconciliation, acknowledging the family's pain and the dog's loyalty, freeing both from the binds of their eternal watch. At the clock tower, the descendant worked to remove the cursed object, its dark influence over the chimes causing the fabric of time around the tower to warp and weave unnaturally. As the object was extracted and brought to the square, the clock's erratic tolling ceased, its hands aligning at midnight, the hour of Eddington's deepest shadows and brightest truths, the abandoned house, once teeming with the laughter of the spectral children, fell silent as the diary was read aloud, the family story of fear and escape merging with the town's narrative, the descendant's acknowledgement of the tragedy, the understanding of the fear that drove the family away, allowed the spirits of the children to find solace, their playful echoes fading into the night. In the town square, the descendants encircled by the townspeople who had gathered to witness the end of their collective nightmare, placed the items in a formation that mirrored the stone circle in Blackwood Forest. As they chanted, the artifacts glowed, their energies intertwining, creating a vortex of light and shadow above the square. The spirits of the woman, the dog, family from the house, and the essence of the clock tower's dark past manifested around the ritual, drawn to the power of their stories being acknowledged and resolved. The spectral woman in red found peace as her tale was understood, her form dissolving into light with a final grateful glance at the locket. The phantom dog, its duty fulfilled, lay down to rest, fading away with a contented sigh. The children from the abandoned house, their laughter now a sound of joy rather than sorrow, danced around the square before ascending into the night sky. As the ritual reached its climax, the cursed object shattered, its fragments consumed by the vortex. The clock tower's bell tolling a clear, pure note that resonated with the end of the curse. The sky above Eddington cleared, the stars shining brightly, as if the town itself was breathing a sigh of relief. The descendants, their faces weary, but alight with the success of their endeavor, felt the weight of generations lift from their shoulders. The townspeople, witnesses to this night of supernatural reckoning, realized that the fabric of their community, woven with tales of hauntings and legends, was now cleansed, ready to be reforged into a new story. Yet, as the light from the ritual dimmed, a deeper, more ancient whisper echoed from the shadows of Blackwood Forest and the oldest corners of Eddington, suggesting that while this chapter of horror might have ended, the story of the town's dance with the supernatural was far from over. The descendants, now guardians of Eddington's paranormal legacy, looked towards the forest, understanding that their bond with the town's hidden history would call them again to unveil and confront whatever mysteries lay waiting in the unseen folds of the night. As the remnants of the ritual faded and the townspeople of Eddington began to disperse, a sense of normalcy attempted to reassert itself. However, the descendants felt a lingering unease, an awareness that the night's events were but a precursor to deeper, more ancient mysteries the town concealed. 
their attention was inexorably drawn to Blackwood Forest, where the echoes of a more primal, forgotten history whispered through the trees. The forest, now a place of both fear and fascination, called to them, its secrets intertwined with the very roots of Eddington. In the following days, strange symbols were discovered etched into the trees at the forest's edge, symbols that resonated with the artifacts used in the ritual. These markings, ancient and arcane, seemed to pulsate with an otherworldly energy, suggesting a gateway or portal lay hidden within the forest's depths. A legacy of the town's ancestors meddling with forces beyond their understanding. Compelled to investigate, the descendants organized an expedition into Blackwood Forest, each step taking them deeper into a land where the boundary between myth and reality blurred. The forest seemed alive, aware of their presence, its ancient trees whispering secrets in a language lost to time. Their journey led them to the heart of Blackwood, where the vegetation grew wilder and the air thrummed with an unseen power. Here, they found a clearing dominated by a stone structure, part altar, part portal, covered in the same arcane symbols found on the trees. The air around the structure shimmered with a spectral light ground was littered with relics that hinted at ceremonies and rituals performed by generations long past. The descendants felt a magnetic pull towards the altar, each symbol and rune speaking to them of old packs and ancient beings, entities that had once walked the land alongside humanity. Their presence woven into the fabric of Eddington's history. As they examined the altar, the air grew colder and the light dimmed as if a cloud had passed over the sun. A sense of anticipation filled the clearing, the very atmosphere bristling with the potential for revelations or calamities. The forest held its breath, waiting for the next act in the age-old drama that played out in its shadowed glades. Unseen eyes watched from the darkness, their gaze heavy with the weight of centuries, their silence a challenge and a warning. The descendants, standing at the threshold of discovery, realized they were not just uncovering the past, but opening the door to a realm that had been deliberately obscured. A chapter of their town's history shrouded in shadow and silence. As they prepared to activate the altar, to peer beyond the veil and confront the ancient legacies of Eddington, the air around them vibrated with the power of untold stories whispers of the forest, merging with the voices of their ancestors, guiding and cautioning. The stage was set for a descent into the forgotten lore of Eddington, a journey that would unravel the threads of reality and myth, leading the descendants and the town into the heart of the unexplained mysteries that lay hidden in the darkness beneath the surface of their world. The descendants, with the ancient altar before them, hesitated, aware that their actions could unravel the tightly wound secrets of Eddington's past. The forest seemed to close in around them, its ancient presence both menacing and protective, as if guarding the threshold between worlds. One of the descendants, an expert in arcane symbols, deciphered the inscriptions on the altar, revealing a ritual that could open the gateway, 
offering a glimpse into the true nature of the town's bond with the otherworldly. The ritual required elements from the natural surroundings, items steeped in the forest's essence, stones from the clearing, water from a hidden spring, and leaves from the oldest tree in Blackwood. Gathering these elements, they began the ritual, their voices echoing through the trees, melding with the natural sounds of the forest into a haunting melody. The symbols on the altar glowed, casting an eerie light that illuminated the clearing with an otherworldly radiance. As the ritual reached its climax, the fabric of reality thinned the air shimmering as if heat-hazed, revealing fleeting visions of other times and places, scenes from Eddington's past, and possibly its future. Shadowy figures, perhaps ancestors or spirits bound to the forest, flickered at the edge of vision, their features blurred, their intentions obscure. The ground beneath the altar trembled, and a low, resonant hum filled the air, growing louder, more insistent. The descendants felt a pull, a compulsion to step closer, to peer into the depths of the portal as it began to open, its boundaries marked by the glowing runes. Within this gateway, they saw a tapestry of Eddington's history unraveling, showing the town in different epics under the shadow of the forest's watchful gaze. Scenes of harmony between the townsfolk and the forest's spirits alternated with moments of conflict and betrayal, hinting at a cyclical struggle between understanding and fear, respect and dominance. The visions grew more intense, more personal, showing moments from the descendants' own lineage, their ancestors' interactions with the forest and the beings that dwelled within it. They saw the original pact that tied the town to the forest, a bond of protection and sacrifice, and the eventual corruption of this agreement, leading to the disturbances and hauntings that plagued Eddington. As they absorbed these revelations, the air around the portal thickened, and the figures in the shadows stepped closer, their features becoming more distinct, more familiar. These were the guardians of the forest, the entities that had once walked alongside the townspeople, now estranged by the passage of time and the breaking of ancient vows. The descendants realized that the altar was not just a gateway, but a bridge, a point of reconciliation between the human and the supernatural, the past and the present. To restore balance, they would need to renew the old pacts, to acknowledge and rectify the transgressions of their ancestors. The narrative, now deeply entwined with the fate of Eddington and its shadowed protector, Blackwood Forest, poised on the brink of a new era. The descendants stood at the heart of the convergence, their actions capable of healing old wounds or deepening the rift, their choices echoing through the annals of the town's history, ready to shape the future of their interaction with the unseen world. In the heart of Blackwood Forest, the descendants of Eddington, surrounded by the ancient guardians, reached a pivotal moment. The portal before them, aglow with the mingled light of past and present, beckoned for a resolution to centuries of estrangement and conflict. With newfound understanding and respect, the descendants initiated a final ritual, not to seal away the supernatural forces, but to harmonize them 
with the town's fabric. They offered tokens of peace, items representing Eddington's history and goodwill, and spoke vows to honor and protect the balance of nature and the legacy of their ancestors. As they chanted, the forest responded. The trees swayed, not with wind, but with the rhythm of the ritual, their leaves whispering a sense. The guardians, their forms now clear and less foreboding, stepped forward, accepting the offerings and joining in the chant, their voices a harmonic convergence with those of the descendants. The portal pulsed, its light intensifying, then burst in a cascade of luminous energy, sweeping through the forest and the town beyond. This wave of power, gentle yet profound, carried away the remnants of malice and misunderstanding, cleansing the land of the shadows that had lingered too long. In Eddington, the spectral phenomena ceased woman in the red dress, the phantom dog, the tolling clock tower, and the laughter of the children in the abandoned house faded into legend, their stories resolved and their spirits at peace. The townspeople, awakened in the night by the serene light, felt a sense of renewal and hope, as if waking from a long troubled dream forest's guardians, their forms blending into the natural world once more, became protectors rather than punishers, their presence a comforting whisper in the leaves rather than a menacing howl in the dark. Blackwood Forest, once a place of fear, transformed back into a sanctuary, its beauty and mystery a source of wonder and respect. The descendants, their duty fulfilled, emerged from the forest changed. They were no longer mere inhabitants of Eddington, but keepers of its deepest secrets and stewards of the harmony between the human and the supernatural. They carried with them the knowledge that the peace they had helped forge was not a permanent victory, but a promise to be upheld by future generations. As dawn broke over Eddington, the light revealed a town reborn, its scars healed, its nightmares dispelled, and its connection to the mystical world of Blackwood Forest restored and redefined. The people of Eddington would remember this night as a turning point, the end of an era of hauntings, and the beginning of a new chapter of coexistence with the unknown. The story of Eddington's Night of Revelation became a tale passed down through generations, a reminder of the thin veil between the natural and the supernatural, and the importance of respect and understanding in maintaining the balance between the two. In the harmony of this small town, nestled on the edge of the enigmatic Blackwood Forest, true nature of fear and the power of reconciliation found a lasting, peaceful coexistence. <laughs>